And joining me now from Ilori via Zoom to discuss one of the world's major problems, climate change, is an environmental activist, Professor Larry Fagbo. Good to have you join us, Professor Fagbo. Uh, Professor Fagbo, can you hear me? Um, so, Professor Fagbo, my, my question basically, I understand that you can hear me, but my question is, um, we've been having several meetings and I, I just want to ask you because there have been several conferences as well on climate change how would you assess the progress made so far Th thank you very much uh, let me first say that can you hear me yes i can hear you please go ahead can you hear Am I on? Thank yes, you yes, you're on. Let me first say that climate change is real. And for this reason, all of us must be concerned. If you look at what is happening so far, I will say that for quite a long time, it's been more of talk, talk. It's been for quite some time now, it's been more of talk, talk than action. When you look at the, uh, the Paris Agreement that was signed in 2015, it's seeking more sustainable and fair future, and it's also looking at a clean and inclusive energy transition. The question is, how are we implementing this? Now, COP20. To, uh, uh, COP26 is coming up now, and the world is focused on, on facing out fossil fuel, getting on board renewables, talking about electric cars and the rest of them, but there are some issues that are very deep and which will not go away. Mm. And do you agree with a statement made by the Vice President? that um, since Africa is not um, one of the major emitters of carbon, that perhaps time should be given to the, 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 the continent in terms of catching up with um, renewable energy and clean energy. Yes, I, I can hear you. Please go ahead. I asked the question. Yes. Did you, hear, did you no, get I the question? Okay. So how do we how do we work towards for Nigeria that has invested so much in fossil infrastructure? How do we work towards uh, uh, a fair exit plan such that the target of 2050 can be met? Another thing is you find out that used cars are still being exported to developing countries by developed nations. Yet we are talking about and these are used cars that are riding on fossil fuel. Mm. So how do we ensure that we are able to think through all of this together and not leave these countries that are disadvantaged to be sorting them out on their own? These are the deeper issues that should concern COP26 such that we can achieve effective climate change justice globally. Otherwise, it will be a case of you run a thousand meters, you move back 5,000 meters. It will continue to make it a talk show unless we are able to meet these issues that verge on the issue of climate justice. If we do not deal with them, it will continue to be a challenge globally to meet the target of 2050 zero emissions. Mm. But Prof, when you look at where we are now, um, a lot of environmentalists like yourself will say that we are in a climate crisis and climate emergency. So can the, world, can the rest of the world wait for Africa? Well, the rest of the world will not wait for Africa. But we must also realize that Africa is one of the least polluters, yet they are bearing the brunt of the crisis. So why we will continue to put pressure on African leaders to act right, the world, must, the global community, particularly the developed countries, must also be sincere in terms of different pledges and commitments that they are making. If they are not sincere with these pledges and commitments, it will be a challenge. The truth of the matter about climate change is, if you leave one person behind, 
everybody is going to be in trouble. So it is not a case of whether we want to wait for Africa or not. It is a case of if you do not take Africa along with you, there will be challenges. I recognize, as I stated earlier, that leaders in Africa must also continuously think of what they need to do. But the global community must also show sincerity of purpose mm. in, climate, in relation to climate justice. And I was just going to ask you that. It, it, you it, it's, yes, I can. It, it's like democracy in Nigeria where people will say, some people will say, look, Nigeria has to um, decide its, its own kind of democracy or Africa has to de decide its own kind of dem democracy. Can we also chart our own part in terms of adaptation and uh, mitigation, mitigation process when it comes to climate change? We can, we, I fully agree with you. We must begin to look inwards in terms of adaptation process. But no one person can do it alone. We definitely are scientists, our environmental managers, our environmental researchers. All of us must continue to think of what will work for Africa. We must stop the idea of just waiting for the developed nations to feel the thing that you talk about, uh, the, the COVID vaccine, Africa must continue to think through the box also and ask itself, what are those things that are peculiar to me, that are unique to me, and which I must seek the solution? Look at what happened a few days back when malaria vaccine came out. This is the kind of thing that Africa must do in terms of climate change adaptation strategies. But the fact still remains that the global community, particularly the developed countries, must not continue to play ostrich in terms of their pledges and commitment. When you sit at the table and agree to something, everybody must come together and ensure the implementation of that thing. Mm. And we're monitoring this meeting um, that has the vice president in London. We'll see um, some of the resolutions reached. It, it will show us the, the, the footprint as to where we are heading next, next and how seriously we take this. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. Um, environmentalist Professor Larry Fagbon.